Hello and welcome to our 2020 Red Mass. What a disappointment that we could not be in person this year for our Red Mass, which is always one of the highlights of our academic year. This past year has been a challenge for so many people worldwide and in our own Zaglaw community. We could not have gotten through it without your support and without your prayers. We wish you peace, happiness, and good health in the months to come. We hope to close out the year in strong fashion and to be back together in person next year for our Red Mass. May peace be with you and God bless. Good afternoon and welcome to our Red Mass. This tradition goes back to the 1300s, uh, and it marks the beginning uh, of our judicial year. And we gathered here in the, church, in the chapel of St. Ignatius Loyola here at the heart of the law school. And we're here as a community, we're here as a community of people who follow the Lord, who are practitioners in the law. And so let us begin as we begin all things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mystery, as we invoke the Holy Spirit to come upon us, to guide us through this season, to guide us through this year, we're mindful that God calls us to be faithful to him, faithful to follow him. We're mindful that there are moments in our days, moments in our life when we fall short, when we do things that harm one another, that harm ourselves, when we do things that offend God. Let us ask for mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. And we say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that in the, grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, the, sp the faith, to another faith by the Spirit to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another mighty deeds, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another varieties of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. As the body is one through its many parts and all the parts of the body throw many, are one body, also one Christ. For in one spirit we're all baptized <clears throat> into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, we are all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now the response royal psalm. Fill us with your love, O Lord, as we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O Lord. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O Lord, how long, to show pity to your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. At dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exalt and rejoice all our days. Give us joy for the days of our affliction, for the years we have looked upon evil. Fill us with your love, O Lord, 
and we will sing for joy. Let your deed be seen by your servants and your glorious powers by their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands or give success to the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in the synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up and read. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, Jesus handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently on him. He said to them, Today this sacred passage has fulfill, is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of Jesus and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. He, they also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? My friends, the gospel of the goodness of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So all of my time uh, as a lawyer uh, and as a priest, I've never actually presided at a Red Mass before. Uh, I've always attended Red Masses, but the spotlight is usually on someone else. Um, and so as I was doing research for this Red Mass, I'm thinking, a lot of the homilies that I've read, right, uh, to do the research for this, uh, about what you say, they were mainly from non-lawyers. They were bishops or priests who are priests and bishops, but they're not necessarily attorneys themselves. And so I'm, I was trying to say, well, what can I say to people, right? And there's something nerve-wracking about speaking to lawyers outside of the courtroom because it's almost like, you know, you're being judged, right? It's, this is as difficult as, as, as preaching among my, my Jesuit brothers, right? Because they know more than I do. So what is it can I possibly say, right, that would make sense to them? And so speaking and presiding and preaching at a Red Mass like this, you feel the same sense of anxiety because what can I say to the other attorneys? Uh, who are much more experienced, uh, who are much more, uh, who have done this a lot longer than what, what, what we have done. But I think in our gospel reading, right, I find it's interesting that Jesus went back to his hometown. Right? In some ways, this is the beginning of his public ministry. He went back to his hometown, he went back into his tradition, and he's read from Isaiah. And in Isaiah, he finds his calling. He finds his purpose. He found his calling, he found his purpose. I think one of the questions that we ourselves usually don't ask after we graduate from law school and after we go into the practice is why did we become lawyers? What caused us to want to go down this profession? And every day I think, you know, when I'm working in the clinic, for example, right, I really do see being an attorney, working as a lawyer, it's really is a vocation. It's a calling, right? And oftentimes we, we attribute vocation to that of being a priest or being a religious sister, right? But really, being a lawyer itself is a vocation because it takes your entire self, it takes your whole body, it takes your mind in order to do this work. Because there are days when you don't want to get out of bed, but you get out of bed because of your client. There are days when you don't want to do that research and sit in the library, right, to read through documents, right? You don't want to do that because there are other things you want to do. But the reason you show up and you do what is asked of you is because the client's needs are there. So I really want to kind of pay attention to this notion of vocation as lawyers. Vocation as lawyers. What is our vocation as lawyers? And oftentimes we don't have enough time to think, why did we do this in the first place? You know, I'm an attorney. 
And in some ways, I wanted to be a lawyer before I even wanted to be a priest. My vocation to want to be an attorney happened before I wanted to be a Jesuit. Um, where did that come from? I was six years old. I was in a refugee camp in, 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 in Indonesia. And we, were, we had just escaped out of Vietnam, right? And life was turned upside down. And I didn't speak a word of English. But in the camp, right, you know things was happening. I may not have appreciated all the nuances of what it means to be a refugee, living in a state of unfamiliarity, living in a state of chaos, right? But I remember, this, I remember very specifically one of those experiences where I and my father, because we were the two of us in the camps, we went to have an interview with UN lawyers. And we were sitting on one side, and they sat on the other side. And I didn't understand what was going on, but I knew that the two people sitting on the other side of the table, they have the knowledge, they have the power, they know how to liberate me, they know how to make my life better. And I found out later that they were lawyers, but then I realized someday I wanna be sitting, I wanna be sitting on the other side of the table. I wanna help someone who feels hopeless, who feels trapped, who feels that there's no option. I wanna be on the other side of the table to give them hope. I want to sit on the other side because I know that's where the power is. And having that power to make someone's life better, that's why I want to do this. So then law school happens. It just so happened that a few years ago, I was working in a refugee camp in Thailand as an attorney. And I find myself sitting across the table from a father and his son. And we were going through the credible fear interview. And I was working with them on their narrative. And then it dawned on me, not long ago, well, 30 plus years ago, I was that kid sitting on the other side. Right? In some ways, the circle is now complete. Jesus came back to his hometown to find his roots. And he came back there, and he found out what his calling was. I think it's a good reflection about what we need to do today in our lives, especially when things are chaotic in our world. Politically, socially, economically, things are in chaos right now in our world. And what do we as attorneys do? We're called to assist people. But before we can assist someone, we need to go back and find out why do we do what we do. And so I would encourage you throughout this year to reflect about why did you take on this mantle? Why did you become lawyers? Why did you go into the legal profession? Because those are the reasons that will get you out of bed in the morning. Those are the reasons that will give you the courage and the strength to do what you do. The Holy Spirit has given us the gift, the gift of being defender of justice, the gift of accompanying people when they need us the most, reaching into the core of who we are and finding how that gift is nurtured and trained and brought to fruition. That's what we do as attorneys. So as we begin this calendar year of the court, let us remind ourselves, why do we do what we do? And really consider our vocation as lawyers, as future lawyers, Consider that as a vocation. It's who we are. We do this because this is who we are. We do this because this is what God invites us to do. The practice of law is a vocation. It is a vocation that comes from God. It is a vocation that we are trained to live out. It is a privilege to be an attorney. It is a privilege to accompany others. But it's also a privilege to know that this is what God calls us to be. And so as we begin this year, as we begin this year in a way, mindful, mindful that God accompanies us, God walks with us, and God really missions us to accompany those who need our assistance. Please stand. Gathered in joyful hope, we offer our prayers to God who creates hearts of love. The intercession today is we pray to the Lord. For the members of the Gonzaga University School of Law community, students, faculty, administrators, and staff, that each one of us may become one of God's ministers of justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our alumni, benefactors and friends who have supported Gonzaga and its School of Law in so many ways, that they may know our gratitude for their kindness and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. 
for justice in this world, a justice that reflects God's love for every human being who is created in God's likeness. We also pray for those who seek justice for the forgotten members of our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who have been singled out as victims of hatred or who have been threatened by the violence of bigotry, let us also pray for the conversion of those who hate others, that they may be open to God's loving spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For all members of the legal profession, that they may promote God's justice in this world. We pray to the Lord. And now let us pray for those from the legal community who have died during this past year. Jean Annis, Edward Anson, Mauro Bayero, Gary Benjamin, Robert Rachan, Melissa Boswell, Laura Bowen, Jess Carriker Jr., Conrado Cavazos Jr., Clark Colwell, Vincent Dressel, Max Etter Jr., David George, Jean Goderis, Charles Hammer, Fred Hansen, Timothy Harkins, Stephen Haskell, Jack Hetherington, Claremont Hormel, Sam Jankovic, Janet Jenkins, Father William Keenan, Christopher Kincaid, Stella Lutz, Muriel Martinez, Doug Main, Janice Main, the Honorable Philip Medargarin, Daniel Mitchell, Godwin Momenon, James Niblack, Faye Oakes, Leon Olney, Mildred Peterson, David Peterson, Donald Querna, Clifford Rankin, Michael Reagan, Robert Redmond, Scott Schillinger, Joyce Smith, Larry Stevenson, Dwight Stevens, Greg Tim, John Tyner III, Fred Valdez, Evelyn Vandenberg, Brian Watson, Blake Wilson, Donald Winters, Jim Workland, Joel Wright, and Arnold Young, that they may rest in peace in the loving arms of our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our creator, guardian of our homes and source of all blessings, you delight in the happiness of your people. Hear the prayers this community offer for all your people and for the entire world. Fulfill our needs and guide our actions towards the building up of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good of the Holy Church. Sanctify, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the, he all the heavens and sitting at your right hand. He poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread. Give it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, by taking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and other clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Aloysius Gonzaga, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await in joyful hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. For a moment, let us pause to pray for peace. Let us pray for peace in our world. Let us pray for peace in our nations. We pray for peace in our own communities and families. And we pray for peace in our hearts. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For communion, I will come to you. If you're not receiving communion and want like, like a blessing, please, please place your hand on, over your heart. Confirm, O God, what you have brought about in us from your holy temple, which is in Jerusalem. Let us pray. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them joyful by the inner sprinkling of his dew. Grant this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're here in our chapel, we're in a smaller setting, but I think it's important to know that our prayers goes out to all of our community, especially our alums. Um, especially during this difficult time, please be assured of our thoughts and prayers here at the Law School. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord by loving us and one another. Thanks be to God. <laughs>